When our founding mothers came together, their dream was to have a place where their kids could go that was safe, affordable, where they could take a break. These were parents who were exhausted. 40 years later, I look at it and say, that dream came true, but it's the same dream. We were pretty desperate, and then we found respite care. The only people that had taken care of Margot before we came here were Brian and I. Like, nobody else had taken care of her, not even for an hour. And it's such a relief to me that I just feel incredibly lucky that we live in Fort Collins and that we have this option. Margot came to respite care when she was, I want to say like 12 weeks old. I mean, itty bitty tiny. And she had a feeding tube. Parents were nervous, but our staff is fantastic and we are able to serve kids with pretty severe medical needs. James has Leshnihan, which is a rare genetic condition, but he is the most strong-willed child ever. Best case scenario would be that he would walk with a walker someday. Worst case scenario is he might be in a wheelchair forever. We finally got a diagnosis and the pediatrician said, do you guys, do you feel some relief? At least now you know. And we both answered, no, not really. There's four other kids with his diagnosis in the state. So it's not like we have a wealth of knowledge on how to handle James all the time. So we are learning all together and their knowledge is helpful for our growth as well. And I share this all the time is that other people are caring for my child who love him just as much as we do. Our kids know that no matter what they're achieving, no matter what has happened that day, they're gonna be accepted with love and they're gonna be treated with love. And that's one thing that has never changed over the 40 years and never will. One of our little kids, Rusty, who has grown up and is now, I don't know, he's close to 40. He used to say friend's house. That was respite care to him, was friend's house. And I think that's what it still is today. <laughs> My old friend Breck. Breck loves people. Like when he walks in, he's got a smile that just like brightens anyone's day. I think if anyone's met Breck, they probably were offered a hug or just given a hug. Respite has given Breck a community. And by that I mean, one, he isn't able to safely, like at 13 years old, ride down to a friend's house or go hang out at the park by himself. But Respite gives him peers, it gives him friends, it gives him a place that is just his. There's your home run ball. Mom! The amount of times I get like the, oh, you're Breck's brother. He has the light and he's like spreading it to other people, I kind of think. Because of Respite, he becomes so just like strong in his ability to connect with people. It's felt like a fairy tale kind of place. It literally is a perfect place for our family. When I first started at Respite Care, we were serving 15 families, and now we're serving, you know, closer to 150. Uh, how many hours we provided last year? Is it critical? It's important. But what we're doing for each single child is what's really, really important. One thing that was always impactful on me is the staff we work with here. They don't see the disability, they dig for the ability. We go to camp, we have to take a young lady in a wheelchair and get her into this little sliver of a rock called the hidden room. And some people would say, no, nope, can't do it, can't do it, not the respite care staff. There's four of us, we had two spotting from the top, two spotting from the side, shimming her through this rock and the smile when she came out the other side, worth it. Sound good? Okay. Don't hit your bat. Breck has played on unified basketball teams and he's played on a baseball team. Breck has invited respite staff to come to his games. And man, they showed up. They showed up with signs and chants and cheers and music. But showing up when they're not expected to be there, I mean, that just warms my mom heart. I had no idea how giving this community is. I, I really did not until I stepped into this position. Also, all the volunteers. We have 404 volunteers that come through our doors and make this place what it is. I've never been a part of any organization that has been so full of love and so grateful for their jobs and where they're at. I grew up with a family, or my mom used to say, 
success is also giving back to the communities. Their commitment never wavers. They're just always there. They're always spot on. This to me is just a, just a big playground with, with the greatest kids in the world. I think we all need love. Kids need to feel loved. And I still, at 72, need to feel loved. And I walk into this place and kids say, Tom's here. And I mean, this is the happiest, most fun place in the world, I swear. You feel that and you see that, you don't see anyone kind of being like, oh, like I'm just gonna lay back today. Like everyone, every single day, you can see is just all in to help. It really does make me think on how committed I am to other things. Like I wanna become as committed as people are to this place. You know, it sounds kind of overstated to say that they saved our family's life. It, it's not, it, that's what happened. Abby was just treated like a normal kid. Uh, one of my fondest memories was when I went to pick her up one day, and this was when respite care was on the corner of Wood and Cherry. And I drove up and Abby was out on the curb, on the grass with a bunch of kids, um, and they were having a lemonade stand. And Abby was on the blanket selling lemonade. <laughs> you know, and here's a little girl who was nonverbal and, you know, never walked. Uh, she was very limited in terms of her abilities, but that didn't matter because the people that worked there, they love those kids like their own, and there's no differentiation in terms of ability. It was amazing. It's like a family. I think that's the best way to explain it, is respite care is an instant family. We have the best of both worlds. You know, it is convenient. It is something that's allowing us to live our lives and yet also she's in a fantastic place. The kids grow from somebody saying they'll never walk and they'll never talk to us being the ones that see their first steps. Honestly, you don't know how amazing it is until you need it and until you see it for yourself.